Hi there. In this video, we are going to see how can we build request dynamically, means at the runtime, right? So this far, what we have done is we have set everything uh, before we send that request, right? So it's the static composition. Now we are moving toward, you know, implementing the dynamic composition. So means like, you know, all the parts within your request, like your method, right? Your uh, path, your query parameters, body we have already seen right so if you have not watched part 11 go and check that out uh, so send data from script i've already covered and the name of the channel is qa box let's test right and you see there are a lot of uh, videos created on postman in this playlist learn api testing using postman and in part 40 uh part 14 yeah in part 11 so we have seen how can we supply the body from the uh, pre-request script section okay in this particular section we are going to cover other parts like you know query parameters path parameters http method and then we also see that you know can we supply all, all this data from outside you know from external file and that ways we can have multiple iterations right so not these are not static requests right so these are dynamic requests and then we are hooking the external file to make it data driven all right so that's what we are going to see let's start with point number two which is to build dynamic query parameters right so let's move to our postman and see how can we do that so as you could see this is the example of a static request and you could see that everything is already set up you click send to get the response okay now what we want to do is as you could see that in this you will see whatever we are going to pass into the query parameters you will see that inside this argument okay now we are going to create this dynamically right and there uh, there are um, at least three ways you can uh, make your application dynamic uh, sorry your, your request dynamic so go to the pre-request section and let's see what is the first way let's say you say uh, let uh, query params you define an object okay and you say uh, let's say uh, instead of foo one and foo two we use something else so we say uh, name right and we say let's say uh, john right and then we say uh, age uh, and let's say that age is 25 okay now what we want to do is we want to add these two as the query parameters right so first way is all you have to do is uh, let Let's say let's call this as object and let's use the same name. Variable name should be meaningful and then you say is equal to and then we have this method dot keys when you do so and you pass in this object what it will return you it will return you the array of keys so it will return you name and age all right so now what do we want to do so we want to transform so map method is available on your array object and it is going to transform so what transformation do we want to apply right so we want to do so let's say the value that you are passing so it is going to iterate over each one of the value let's say you have an array uh, one and two with value one and two and you want to do a square of it right so this is a transformation so when we apply the the, the multiplication right with the same number that's the square of it right so that and the outcome of map is again an array object all right so here what we want to do is uh, what do we want to transfer we want to transfer this into something like this so this is key equal to and this is your value all right so in our case we have to use template literal and we are going to say so how can I retrieve key from here so I can say this O is nothing. So I've already fetched the keys using this key. And this is the first value, right? So it is going to be my key. So I say O and then equal to, all right? What is the value that I want to 
have in here it's the value of that key all right how can i fetch the value of a key by using this computer member access syntax so i can say oh okay so this is going to return me this right but i still have to apply this this ampersand is missing so then what you can do is join and you can provide the the separator right so what you are doing is let's say you have one two one three so you are combining all that let's say you want to add comma in between so the output would be one comma two comma three right in our case what do we want we want ampersand all right so before we do anything let's see whether this is generating the correct result or not okay so let's pass in this value okay and the console is already open let's clear the send the request and see this is what we want in our query parameter in the request right so this is method number one uh what is method number two let's look at method number two and then We'll move on to the logic part, right? Uh, let's say we do use blue dash library, right? In the last video, we have talked about that. So if you have not seen again, uh, go to this channel and watch part 26. Here we have briefly talked about all the external model model libraries that are available, right? All right. So uh, how can we use that? So now again, it's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. So of course, there we have this dot keys method available, and in that you have to pass the object. So what is my object? So this is my object. This method will return you all the keys. Now you want to do the transformation, all right? So what is the method for transformation? It is map, and then the first argument is I think it's your uh, array. And then what transformation you want to do so you want to do the same transformation okay so we are going to pass this all right and now what do we want to do now we want to now join all the values in within the array using ampersand sign so again dot join right and then what we can do What is the value you have to use here ampersand right and let's store this into this variable and this is approach number two using new dash library this is using javascript object right uh, let's uh, comment this out okay and check whether we are getting the same result back or not okay so come here clear this out with the send button and yes we are getting the same result back right but it's still a lot of work so now let's see the the third way of doing this in a much simpler way right so how can we do that so let me comment this as well out and let's look at the third method which is using query string remember this is a node module that is available into postman talk about that in the uh, part 26 of this video series all right and now we don't require this we require const <coughs> query uh, string equal to require and we require what query string okay so now with the help of this what we can do is so let's say query string dot string method is there and all you need to do is pass this object right so the next is I have to store it in a variable right this query string method except uh, more parameters so the default separator is ampersand so i don't need to apply that all right uh, if you want to pick anything else you can do so now let's uh, clear the console and hit the send button and we get the same result back amazing isn't it 
All right. Cool. So we are going to then use this because this is the most simplified version. All right. And now what do we have to do? Instead of passing these values from here, I have to pass it from the environment variable. We have learned that right in the environment variable. So how can I pass this local uh, variable into my request? So I have to load that into my variable, right? Environment variable first. How can I do that? Very simple. Environment dot set and we say set params. Uh, sorry, these are query params. Query use the same query param query param all right so this is now saved and now since this is available into environment variable all i have to do is replace this with okay so now you see the result currently being shown to us is bar one and bar two now it should be name and age okay so let me clear this in the send button and you see so this is how you are going to you know update your or set your query parameters dynamically all right uh, so now next thing that we have to do is let's try to send this thing from our external data file can we do so yes again very simple all you have to do is pm dot iteration and somehow it is not shown here so better i write it and then uh, Iteration data, right? This is what we want. So, from here, iteration data to get, and I'm going to separate from the external file. So, this is going to be the name, right? And let me do the same with page. And now, let's do one thing. So, in, now, now uh, let's save that. Uh, so I have to save it somewhere. Let me save it into into sandbox only. Let me save that. Okay, so this is now saved. And let us run in the collection. Uh, go to the runner. And well, let's wait. So we have the dependency on the environment, right? And also on a data file. So just to save the time, what I've done is I've created a query string so i'll show you what's there in the preview so now you see we should send two requests right and the first one will be john 25 jane 28 and here also you see there are two iterations all right let us uh, we don't want this we just only want this one right so let's uh, send this and you see two requests are being sent and if we check the name john 25 and Jane and age is 28 amazing right so this is how you can extend it right uh, so you can dynamically generate your request and at the same time you know pass data from outside as well right so this shows that we have full control over it right so next one is to do with uh, 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 what's that uh, next one to, is to do with our path parameter at runtime Again, if you understand the query parameter thing, I mean, this is going to be really easy. So let's say uh, what we want to do is we want to set the path parameter here. All right. So what I've done is I've created an object in here. All right. And in that you see path one and path two. There are two arrays. Right. So this is the first value. This is the second value. Right. Uh, delay and right. So what would happen is when when I send the first request, right. So it is going to be this httpbibin.org forward slash status forward slash 200 and in the second request that is going to be delay forward slash 2000 right so what i've done is i've created this object and we have seen that underscore dot join in the low dash part right so what i'm going to do is and we have also seen that you know uh what is the, what separator we want to uh, you know uh, put in place so in in case of path right you know that we have to use the forward slash so it's that simple so what we are saying is if the condition is false right uh, then execute this else execute that right so in 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 the first case uh, let's let's start with true so when this is true what we are saying is uh, build up this path okay so it's going to be http.bend.org forward slash status forward slash 200 right and again what we are doing it towards the end 
we are setting up in the environment variable and reading that right so this thing so the, the thing is i mean this true and false it, it would be solely depend upon what your requirement is let's say in the previous require based on the previous uh, you know request if you want to check something and then want to take a decision you know which resource you want to hit okay so in that case you can help this because path defines what it's it's how you approach how you reach to a resource right so if you want to reach to a, a specific resource resource based on a certain condition right you have to change the uh, path parameter dynamically all right so this is the logic that you can use so now if i if i set it to true and and let me clear the console part uh, click on the send and let's see so we could see that 200 right status for slash 200 and in the response also the the status code is 200 right um, the other one that we have used here is actually so i set it to false so that the other the else part is executed and if i click on send let's see here so the request would be executed after two seconds that's what we have uh, applied in here and so you see that now this time the other request is being executed right so we have changed the query parameters path parameter and again it's 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 simple right so based on the condition if you let's say here you put in you know uh, let's say success uh, method right which is the success method is your get so now accordingly you can take a decision right and your failure method is let's say false right so you can say uh, uh, so failure method would be you want to repost it right so let's say failure is your post we have seen that in case of post that we have to supply the body and the body we have already seen in part 14 right so you can cop copy that logic from there and pass the body right and in the if else you can take a decision and accordingly set the method uh, as well of the request so this way you know we can control everything we can control the methods we can control you know the path parameters we can control the query parameters and whatnot right so full control over it you can generate dynamic uh request right and see we have see we have made use of uh, you know a uh, node module like uh, you know uh, query para query uh, spring right we have also used node dash right and we have also written code into normal javascript so uh this is about you know building uh, request dynamically or at the one time right so i hope you have liked this video thank you thank you so much